Hi, uh, Maxime here. So first of all, I'd like to thank the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative to help us like doing these uh, bite-sized talks. And today, uh, Francisca Bonat will present uh, us how the transcript of the bite-sized talks happen. So it's a very uh, meta bite-sized uh, talk today. And as usual, uh, please use uh, Slack to your question. So now it's up to you, Fran. Okay, thank you. Uh, welcome everyone. So I'm talking about bite-sized talk transcripts. Uh, just very briefly, oy, 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 what we're going to do today. So I will handle the question of our questions, why to transcribe bite-sized talks at all, and then briefly go in how we did it and why what, what we are going to do in the future. Um, so why? Why are we actually going through all this pain? And the big answer really is that we want to be more inclusive. This is one of the reasons why we got funding from the, from the John Zuckerberg Initiative. But of course, we also have a, a desire to do this. So not everyone is able to actually hear things. So if you rely on the transcripts that are automatically done by YouTube, for example, it can be very difficult to actually get the the, the gist of what is what the talk is about. Also, and even if you hear perfectly, not everyone will be able to understand English well enough to actually figure out what the talk is about. Uh, in addition, we have uh, speakers from all over the world. So there might be accents um, that, that are a bit more difficult to follow. Uh, and so having a really good transcript will help understand these talks a lot better. Um, there's other reasons. So one is, of course, to improve the subtitles for YouTube, but also if you have um, the, the transcript in itself without the, the video, you should be able to understand it. And it will be a resource for, um, for understanding of details that are maybe not in the slides. So um, there will be, hopefully at least, uh, the correct names of all the of all the tools that are used. So you can actually look that up and then it will be easier to search for that um, uh, online. But also, once you have a text, there's a lot of things you can do with that text. You can translate the text, you can uh, put it into some AI based thing and have, have it give you a summary of the text. There is um, a lot of things that we might start to think in the future and it is it will be text based. And the better the information is that you give in, the better it is what you're going to get out. So where can I actually find these transcripts? It's at the, at the moment a bit difficult, I admit that. So I'm going to uh, quickly show you. Um, what you have to do at the moment is you have to go to, now I forgot to open it. Well, I stopped sharing for a second. <laughs> Stop. Um, and I'm going to go to, was there interesting so i'm going to share again uh, this one so if you're on the website what you have to do is you go to events and then you can search for only bite size here and this will be the upcoming ones but if you go to the past one for example let's go to tax profiler and you scroll down what you will find here is that now embedded here is the vid video the youtube video and at the bottom, you will have the transcripts. Uh, you can go directly to one of those. It will show up there. Um, and this is, at the moment, the only way how you will get the transcripts for any talk. But it will be uploaded to YouTube eventually. Then I go back to my slides. So how, how did we do this? Uh, we did try to use the automated transcripts from YouTube first. It is horrible. Uh, <laughs> so basically what happens is that you have a lot of these oohs and ahs and ums that are not removed at all. Uh, also, you will have no punctuation whatsoever. So you have to add the capitalization after every uh, full stop that you have in your in your transcript. It It is... It takes forever. It probably would have been quicker to just write it while you hear it. So that did not work. And that means uh, in comes uh, a new tool, um, which I'm forever grateful to uh, Matthias Zepper, who introduced me to it. It's called Whisper. 
And at the moment um, that I that I started this transcript, Whisper was only available as a tool as is. But from now on, you can also have a next flow pipeline for Whisper. You can find it under uh, this link. And Whisper helped with a lot. So it does add punctuation. It does actually surprisingly uh, recognize a lot of the tools that we're using. Um, and it um, it removes all the M's. It removes a lot of the double mentions. So if you're talking normally, often you, you stop for thinking about something and then you repeat what you have just done before. And so these double mentions, they get edited out automatically, which is super nice. So I can only recommend Whisper if you ever do transcripts for uh, of any video yourself. Uh, but even though Whisper is great, it is not perfect. I don't think any automated uh, talk transcript ever will be perfect. So the main things that we have to do is add timestamps so that we have sec nice sections that belong together. But of course, also names, specifically names of people, but also of tools often get not um, identified correctly. So you have to check um, or check and, and edit those. Um, specialized terminology is also not recognized because library uh, of whisper and also sometimes sentences are super long um it might be ellipses or that yeah just someone had a thought stopped in the thought and continued um afterwards which is totally fine if you're just listening to a person but if you want to just read it it's very difficult to understand so these kind of things we have to manually change afterwards to give you a kind of an idea. So our most favorite words that basically are um, part of pretty much every bite-sized talk, NF Core and Next Flows are very commonly misspelled. Uh, NF Core very typically gets misspelled to NFL and NF4. Um, I don't exactly know why, but every third or so uh, transcript, I read those. Um, and of course, <laughs> Uh, you also have just some misspelling of NFCore itself. So sometimes it does pick it up and in very, very rare cases, it will also type it correctly. Uh, next flow, it also has diverse ways of how it can be uh, written. Um, in the latest one, I had it translated to next or uh, transcribed to next floor. Um, but then of course, there's just some random things that don't uh, repeat like um, illusion will be transcribed to illusion um iterations to situations one of my favorites actually was bioinformaticians to, to bipartitions surprisingly bioinformaticians which is not that uncommon a word i would say gets transcribed a lot wrong um and you can imagine that if you have um ribosomal rna mistranscribed to rivals of rna the sentence will not actually make any sense so uh the handy overall summary can also go become a handy oral summary, which would make sense, but which, which uh, would change a bit the meaning. Um, and just one other example, if you have a sentence, like the, these processes take a sort of bam from the samples. If you just read the sentence, I would have not guessed specifically what this would mean. Uh, once I listened to the transcript, it turned out that it means these processes take in a sorted BAM from SAM tools. So this, I think, shows very clearly that manual work is necessary uh, and that it's worth going through this um, and, and make these changes and not just rely on an automated transcript. So now we're done, right? We are up to date. Everything's fine. So not quite, obviously. Um, we have to add these transcripts to the subtitles on YouTube. Um, which will happen in the not too far future, I hope. Um, and also what we want to try and see if it works fine is to do translations of these YouTube uh, transcripts um, that, that we generate now to have them in different languages, which would be super nice. And of course, bite-sized talks are not finished yet. In fact, this very bite-sized talk is going to be transcribed. So we have this kind of inception way of a bite-sized talk that is uh, transcribed. Um, a bite-sized talk of that talks about bite-sized talk transcript is going to be transcribed. 
So whew. anyway, um, this was all. I would like to thank Matthias for his enormously helpful uh, tip for uh, for Whisper. And also he was writing a, um, a container, I think, for, for Whisper. Marcel and Christopher, who had to um, approve all my pull requests for the transcripts. And of course, all the other reviewers, uh, specifically the speakers that um, went through this horrendous task of reading their own uh, their own talks. I, I'm not looking forward to this. So uh, thank you very much. Um, now I'm, I'm open to any questions. Of course, there's no repository end of code pipeline. I just took the, uh, anyway. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, off to Maxime. <laughs> Uh, good, that was brilliant. Like, thank you very much. Uh, I will try to allow everyone to unmute themselves if you have questions. Um, we haven't done that in a while. Where is this? Yeah, this is what you get when you use the template. Unnecessary things get <laughs> included in the talk. Uh, is there any question actually like oh uh, yes ah. uh, jasmine is asking like uh, how are the transcript added to youtube will they be visible as normal subtitles so yeah um if i i did look a bit into that so you can add your own subtitles in youtube if you are uh, the host of the or the, the the owner of the youtube channel so as nf core i can actually add subtitles and it will be one of the different subtitles that you can choose i think it's going to be called no, I don't recall how it's called, but it will be. I think it will be the default option as subtitles. Uh, do we have one last question, or are we good for uh, for today? I think we are good for today. So thank you again, Fran, for this uh, this by size. Definitely, that was like a question I had, like about like oh everything was happening and stuff. So thank you very much for inviting me, like into all that. And uh, see you soon. Thank you.